What's up guys? We're gonna continue the grinding live arena. I had too much of a break recently so I'm kind of amped up and ready to play. But there's kind of funny and embarrassing thing that just happened. I ended up missing the EO Street fragment event by 5 fragments. I thought I had it all counted out and I would get her but maybe I missed some event accidentally. I'm not even sure what exactly happened. This could totally suck if I was super invested on this champion. But even though she does have some good qualities, I think she will be very good for Sand Devil or maybe even Hydra for some people, but definitely not like the best champion in the game and mandatory. But for newer or mid-game players, if you don't have other good champions for it, she might be super needed, but she isn't that big deal for me, that's why I guess I didn't care and I somehow missed an event, but it's kind of funny that <laughs> that this happened. I think this has happened before. There's been a couple of reasons that I wasn't able to do because it was like Christmas and I was busy or something like that, but this one I was totally planning to do, though I guess we got the mod, so more champions for a mod, I don't think it really matters that much to me either way, to be honest, so... But still, kind of kind of weird thing to miss an easy fusion like that. Anyway, let's see how we do in Arena today. I if she was like a big Arena champion, then I definitely wouldn't have missed a fusion, let's put it that way. I definitely didn't care enough to double check some event, I guess. Okay, Arman's meta continues. Basically, almost universal first pick. E even, he's even more popular first pick now than Sifi. Sifi used to be the go to first pick, but there's multiple other ones that kind of often get the priority at this point. But yeah, I, I don't know, can you even see it on the video, but I'm kind of summer vibing here with the shorts and um, like, I don't know what they call, like a summer shirt. But uh, it's not even like, I'm in Finland, so there's like snow outside. It's not exactly, exactly summer here yet, but I'm actually getting some sunshine and it feels like summer already. It's just been like dark and rose and snow here, so I don't know what you call it in English, like slush, like half melted uh, snow banks. Yeah, it's my arts name is Harima. Yeah, I guess we're gonna go for the same old Let's get the UDK because he still has one support slot and he definitely would pick it if I didn't, but I'm sure he has like lockout or something else bad as well. But I think we're gonna go for the Arma ban and just try to, I mean not the Arma ban, the Arma ban and just try to deal with the Arma passive. Okay, Ronda and Cardio. Yeah, he he definitely doesn't know that I have my Necret in a stone skin. Could even go with Heligat here. Heligat is so fun when you can get fights where where you can use him. Biohack was saying in comments that uh, I guess he lost to me a couple times recently and he forgot that I had my Rotos in stone skin and I guess that made the difference, so good. I'm I'm sure he will remember next time and lots of people will know, but even if they know, you still kind of uh, want to go for it anyway. Okay, maybe he knows. I'm 
I am really surprised that he banned the Rotos when he has both Harima and Ronda in the team who both counter my Rotos and I have like Helicat and other stuff he could ban as well. By the way, today we're not rocking energy, it's just your basic um, basic class of Pepsi. I don't know why people care about it so much, but every time you talk about uh, Colas, people get super amped up about which one is better, Pepsi or <laughs> Pepsi or Coke. I don't know why why it's such an important issue for people. I do like Pepsi, it's sweeter, but uh, I don't really care that much, to be honest. And my my mom definitely would wish I didn't um, drink any soda anyway, regardless if it's uh, sugarless or not. She always keeps uh, nagging that uh, I drink uh, I drink way too much uh, Pepsi or just soda in general. Not that she can do anything about it because uh, she lives like on the other side of country, but uh, she always mentions it when uh, when she sees me. My brother visited me like last weekend, and um, and I guess he snitched it on me. So. I think this is a, I guess, fairly easy fight. We got the Heligat in, which doesn't happen often nowadays, for the reasons that I mentioned many times, that so many of the popular champions in the live arena meta counter Heligat, even if you, like, last pick, last pick Heligat and they are not specifically intending to counter him. But he's kind of hard to use because of that, but like this fight, when you can use Helicat, he's super strong. And even though the Harima passive is kind of taking its toll on us, but Helicat is keeping us alive as well. I don't have my Narsus in there. Oh, okay. Now he does the shield when, when Narsus is dead. I mean. I guess that was gonna happen. But yeah, it maybe felt like I lacked a little bit of damage, but he didn't have the shield up and he has Harima passive and I have pretty fast Narsus build instead of the maximum damage. I keep going back and forth on my Narsus build, not because I'm like whimsical, but I always make it slower and harder hitting for classic arena reset and then I put it back in the fast build for live arena. Okay. How much life harvest he does? Okay, just one champion with five star blessing. I don't know with the life harvest even if we were to get to do the A3, I don't know if we can Okay, never mind, he lost the boss. I don't know if we could have even block revived the uh, Harima at that point. Yeah, Heli got... Oh, he, he surrendered. That's funny. It, it wasn't going that well for me, but okay, he surrendered. Heli got... Um, can be super good with the cruelty. I have tons of... Um, well, not tones of, maybe that's not the right word, but for somebody that doesn't buy soul stones, I have a large amount of the tier 1 essence, and I have been kind of saving it for when I need it, but the, the two things I really want to get right now, or basically only one thing, I I want to get 4 star blessing on Narsus, of course, but outside of that, I don't really need it that much on anybody else, would be nice to get 4 star on um, Ankara. I don't know if I'm gonna go for 6 star on her. 
just because getting six star blessing is so slow and there's a good chance that by the time that I got resources to do it, there's something much more important that I want to get it on. Maybe like a primal champion. Wait, can you even do that? Anyway, so... But the Cruel the Blessing is super good and as you saw, I had like 500 of those tokens. So at this point, I would have enough to get it on not fully on two champions, but basically I could do it on two champions and maybe it's time to do it on Helicat next. I think I got 3-star Helicat Split Soul in the shop a while ago and I didn't go for it, well, maybe like a month ago, but now I got so much stuff that maybe I need to go for it because the Cruel Blessing gets so much. It's kind of like the bone armor that it is way better at higher levels and it's kind of underrated blessing to be honest. I will say that for live arena battles, Rule the Blessing might be the best one for nukers, or at least on par with uh, Ward of the Fallen, let's say. Because as you can see, you if you have it at six star, you can get up to forty percent defense reduction on, on enemies, and this applies to multi hit skills. So. If you hit them once or twice, like, let's say that you're Marius, the upcoming champion that we can get from the event, Marius is gonna do a triple hit, and if you have it at 6 star blessing, that's gonna be 12% uh, defense reduction. And when I'm doing slow fights like that, it definitely does add, add up. <laughs> it does add up, and even on a champion like Helicat, who doesn't really do that much AoE, but he continuously counterattacks with the A1, which is a double hit, and he will reduce their defense a lot over the duration of a fight. And if I got him just to let's say three star blessing, that would be 600 defense, and it would also increase the limit how much I can reduce their defense a lot. So. I need to get him as soon as possible. The reason probably why I didn't go for it last time when I had the chance, apart from the fact that I was saving up for Narcissus, who I just can for the life of me get in the Soul Stone or the Split Soul Shop. But I guess Marius is gonna be something that I want to get it on. But yeah. Marius is gonna take forever, I guess, so I'll worry about that when <laughs> when I get him, but the other issue, of course, like I mentioned, is that Helicat is just kind of um, hard to slot in in the current meta. I'm definitely not gonna degear him, I'm gonna, like, even if I don't use him a lot, he's gonna have my best speed stone skin, at least for now. Well, apart from the 4 piece set that I got on Armands. But, I think for instance on the last video, I don't think I used him in a single fight. But okay, they got the first big Armands again, so... I'm just gonna go with the exact same setup as last time. Trust the outdated dodges that I wasted my... Soul stones to get six star blessing, who is basically kind of um, kind of irrelevant and waste at this point because of the release of Narcissus and him ignoring the Dutch's passive. Okay, he has double buff stripper. For sure, here we can't use Helicat. Then maybe I'm gonna go with Necrat. Since he does have the ally attack quest as well. Though the Mikage passive uh, reducing your turn meter, that's super annoying to deal with as well. Yeah, let's just go for these, and if it comes down to it and he picks UDK or something, 
I could still go with Tormin or something different. Damn. I can't remember Arbois name, but I can't remember that that champion anymore. I feel like he was super hyped up when he was released, and then I haven't seen him that much, but he's still very good. He's annoying with the... Uh, which one is it? Unkillable or block damage buff. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Rotos when he has both Harima and Arbase, but I guess there's no no alternative. I think he's gonna ban my Narcissus. I could have gone for Tormin, but yeah, maybe I should have gone for Tormin. That would have been without defense buff. I don't have Sifi, so it kind of makes makes using Tormin a bit complicated. That's kind of part of the reason why I'm fairly interested of uh, Marius. Even though he doesn't have a passive that makes him tanky, so it's kind of um, basically mandatory at this point in live arena or PvP. But he has the, the other passive that he keeps counter attacking when they when the mythical champions change form, or if you get turn meter reduced, so it would be doubly good against Mikage. But then he also does have the self defense buff and does AOE hits, so he's gonna be good with Fuldi as well. Now that I'm th thinking about Marius, I'm kind of convincing myself to not go for the Heligat so that I can save for it, but Marius is gonna take so long time that I should just go for 4 star Heligat and Narcissus for now, and also go for that with Marius. I was saying early on that I wish they would have given us Marius soul on the event path, but I guess we're not gonna get soul so there's still a possibility that they might do an event for it at some point. I really hope they do, but we'll see. I guess people are gonna get the champion at so different times that it's, it might be hard for them to do an event for it. I remember when UDK um, four star soul event happened, that might have been the first of its kind. And that was a good while after his release. I don't remember if Wukong or UDK was the first one, but when UDK was released, or the event for it, I already had him at 4-star blessing, or I just got him to 4-star blessing, and it felt pretty sad. Yeah, I don't know, can we beat this one? I think he has so much damage that we might not be able to survive long enough. I'm gonna get so much weak hits with both Arbeis and Harima, but then he doesn't have a revive, so... If I can just crit with an A2, maybe that might be enough to even kill the Harima. Pro probably not, not with the defense buff, but... It would be kind of close. Maybe with the ally attack and A2 it would be enough. Damn. Oh nice. I think the Arbus is gonna move before my Rotos because of the Mika No, okay, never mind. That that would have been good if that happened, but I guess not. Okay, what do I even go for? I guess I'm just gonna go A1. Yeah, back back to full health and stone skin is up soon again. He, he has so many buffs up right now. Not even having any like revivers like Dutch or Sifi in the team. I need to double check that champion's name.
I think he's good, but all of the Primals are good and he isn't as, as crazy as Lazarus or Siegfron, but he's still very good. I would definitely use him if I had one. But th that pretty much <laughs> that pretty much goes for all Primal champions, except the couple ones that are intended for PvE and not PvP. Like, we got one really crazy one recently, the Undead one, but it's it's only for Hydra basically, but that one is super bonkers. Okay, we we were getting those polymorph rocks from our base A1. A1 can be super strong. Oh wait. Wait, wait, can we just kill it if we don't get the weak it now? Arima is... Okay, weak it. Arima passive wasn't up, so... That was an opportunity to actually get somewhere, but now he just has everybody with... Um, block damage, so we can't do anything. And... When your champion is polymorphed, I think the A1 is... Either 10 or 15 percent. I think it's 15 percent chance to remove it. But when they have double cheap, they also do the ally attack, and there's a good chance that they are not gonna sit two turns cheap. And that was basically my only chance to attack him without the Harima passive up. I think. Should I? Which one should I even do? I feel like I kind of want to go for the attack buff. Yeah, yeah. No? Come on. Ah, okay, Harima got out. Yeah, that, that was the only thing that I didn't want to happen. But Harima is at 50% HP with no buff, so... If we can get a crit this time and not weak it, maybe we will be good. Okay, never mind. Rodos is dead, and that's it. He, he has very risky team, he, he has a lot of debuffs. I feel like if you had a um, couple of polymorph champions, it would be very hard for him to beat with that team. It's very. He's rolling a dice every time he uses that one. With like. Our base Mikage and um, Harima, all of them like spamming debuffs endlessly. Okay, can we? No, okay. We lost. Was kind of close. If I didn't weak it there on Alat, I guess we would have won it, but it was super RNG heavy. And of course, I'm like. Super extra hard countered with both Harima and Arbais against Rotos. And like I said in the lobby, he's for sure gonna ban my um, Narses because of the fact that he's he's mega countering the Rotos in that team. But I don't really have options, so that's why I'm always, <laughs> always using Rotos against the counter teams. There's just no, no other choice. Yeah, I don't think anybody is really excited about Marius. I was talking about it in my own Discord and in my clan Discord. And everybody's reaction was like, who cares? It's totally irrelevant champion and it's gonna be like six months when you get him. But I think he could be kind of, even without a, without a tanky passive, I think he's gonna be kind of interesting in live arena, just because those primals are so so popular and so strong, and especially something like Mikage that can can block his passive in so many ways. But this champion is immune to turn meter reduction effects. That's not big deal. But whenever an, an enemy changes form or attempts to decrease this champion's turn meter, counters uh, counter attacks using this champion's default skill. So, this will be a hard counter against Mikage, 
but in general pretty good against all of the primals. If he was tanky he would be like actual like maybe not Harima level, level counter but actually like a big counter but the issue is that he can still easily be one shot even if he's a different scaling champion. Maybe by the time that we get him I can put him in 4 piece stone skin. He would be pretty annoying like when you think about those primal teams they often change to the other form on the first turn. For instance, like Mikage, Arbeis, uh, Lazarius. Like, like, I think a lot of them, a lot of the main ones, they tend to switch the form on the first turn. And I guess they're not gonna be able to do it against Marius, or they're gonna take a little bit damage at least. And he's gonna do AoE A1, and like I said, with cruelty and the passive it's gonna add up and he does have triple hitter on day two but yeah can't wait to try him probably it's not gonna be that big deal but um i think i will end up using him a lot that, that's my prediction maybe most people are not gonna be using him a lot but i think it's not gonna be like quintus i think i will <laughs> i think i will actually use marius instead of quintus but we, we will see about that. They still both have the same issue that they aren't tanky. I, I guess Marius is a little bit more tanky being a defense scaling champion, but you really can't be tanky without like a passive. Even Narcissus is not actually really tanky. He might be able to take a hit, not, not from like a strong Nukers, but some like... Um, Mediocre ones are from supports, but maybe like hybrid Wukong, but Marius can do it. And I, I don't have a stone skin set for Marius right now. I'm pretty... Um, what, what's the right word? I, I'm pretty mental about that kind of stuff and I do, I do check up on those things that are completely irrelevant, like if I'm gonna get Marius in like 8 months or whatever. I have checked multiple times if I can make 4 beast stone skin on him with accessories, but I can't do it. Anyway. By the way, I already shielded for it yesterday, but um, I did. I am gonna start making AFK journey videos. I know I'm barely making any trade videos as well, but I am gonna do it. I did my first video, I have like a bunch of videos that I uh, want to do on AFK Journey, so there's definitely content there. Yeah, I, I got one, one, one video on my new channel with measly 33 views, so it is what it is. It's not easy to start a new channel and I'm not expecting it to go anywhere, but I like the game and might as well do it. It's gonna be a little bit practice for me because I've mentioned this many times before but I actually my true passion is MMO games and I'm one of those many uh, homeless MMO players that I used to play a bunch of MMOs but there hasn't been anything good in a while and I always play new ones when uh, they are out and I'm just waiting for the next good one but when we get something like that, I will definitely make a channel for it. That that has been my plan. Okay. What do I pick? Let's go with the Necrot. Let's let him pick first and maybe he's gonna go with something else other than UDK. I don't think he wants to pick a UDK in a team with Chu Chen. And maybe if he doesn't pick UDK or Lockout, we could just go for the Harima ban and with Trotos. If he happens to do that, then that would be a big mistake and I, I could easily take this. Oh, what? <laughs> he went, okay, he went with Heligat and Lockout. I actually like it. That's a very... Very rough um, matchup. What can I even do about this? 
Yeah, I think we're still gonna go for the Harima plan. It actually kind of makes sense. We're just gonna brace ourselves against the Rockout. I hope he bans Armands, but there's no way that he's actually gonna ban it. I think he might even go... Okay, he, Rotos ban. I was gonna say that he's gonna go for Angora ban, maybe Rotos, but... I actually prefer it this way. Even, even though I picked the Rotos to try to deal with the Helicat, but... Um, Maybe we maybe he doesn't have enough damage and we can stay in the fight long enough to to go through the Helicat block damage. But he does have four star blessing on his Helicat unlike mine. So it's probably gonna do a lot more damage than I think. Okay, so Armands went before Heligat, but we we are locked out. Can we lock out the Heligat though? I hope that went on the A3 and not A2. Oh, he's thinking about it. Oh, never mind. I, I, I thought it was Heligat's turn and he's thinking about it and that would have meant he got locked out on the A3. No, okay, nice. Nice. Wait, what? That's only one skill, right? I think he could have done A2. I don't know why he didn't do it, because... Like I mentioned, it's gonna do AoE hit on the Cruelty, so... If the A2 wasn't on cooldown, I think he should have used it, but... I guess he's saving it for the... When he has defense buff up. But can we actually... He, yeah, he has both Yumeko and uh, Shu Chen, so I guess he's... Are we even gonna get a turn against him? That's the question. What? It's a resistance. Yumeko, or did I just get unlucky there? Okay. <laughs> I guess we're gonna do ally attack with... Uh, yeah, with the Armands, then we didn't. Yeah, we didn't lock him out there. I didn't exactly pick Necra to protect Armands, but I guess we're gonna go with that. I don't. Does he have the lockout? I don't think he has it, even though it got an extra turn from Shujin. Yeah, that's... I guess we're gonna try to spam lock... Okay, nice. We're gonna try to spam lockouts on the... Um, on the Yumeko. I, yeah, I think we're good. Now we should actually get a turn on... Um, Armands. Okay, nice. Okay, now, now, now we're good. Now we're good. Now, he, now he's starting to regret that he went for the... Rotospan and not Armands. Or Angora. I, I guess the Armands was 7 versus. We had the 200 IQ Necrat protection. Who do I even want the poly Polymorph? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I guess, in a way, Evan and I have a lockout now, or two lockout champions, because we're, sp we're spamming lockout on him with A1. Lockout is the one thing that I always complained about my account, that my existence would have been so much easier, especially in the past, if I had lockout. Like, it's gonna rub some people's wrong way. I know they. some people always get triggered if I flex about past accomplishments, but I guarantee you, I mean, I have finished rank 2 twice, I guarantee you if I had lockout back then, I would have at least two trophies. There's like, there's no doubt in my mind I would have at least two, probably more than two 
trophies if I had lockout and I didn't have it when it mattered. Right now if I got lockout that wouldn't be enough to make the difference but it always pained me. Before we got Taras in the game I used to cry about Warlord even before Yumeko and I was always trying to get him nerfed long before I actually had uh, a channel just when I was a random discord user I used to complain about lockout. I still think that lockout is just bad mechanic and it shouldn't work the way it does. Like, I don't think lockout should have ever been... The block buffs debuff is okay. It's still insanely strong, but I think we should have had that, but not lockout in the current form. It makes no sense that you can't um, protect it with immunity buff. Even if it was the way that Let's say that lockout goes through stone skin, but not immunity. I think that would be a fair compromise, even though lockout would still be better than any other debuff in the game, which is it basically is a debuff with all the perks and no none of the downsides, so it's a weird thing. Like imagine decreasing somebody's attack by 50%, or you lock out all of his skills. Obviously lockout is way better. But then also lockout isn't even a debuff and it's just and and chances are that the duration is even more than the two turns you get on the attack debuff because Warlord lockout is gonna be like four turns four turns adjusting to the fact that you reduce it by one on the first turn because many of the nuke skills are like four or five turn cooldown so by the way the Wait, do I have a growth bundle? Nice. Oh, okay. We can, we can do some pulls on video. Then I didn't push on Classic Arena on Monday because I was still kind of feeling uh, sick. But my plan is still to try to do try to stream it on next Monday. We will see. I mean, I have been saying that for a while, but um, I'll try to figure out my streaming setup on Monday and I still the plan the plan is still to stream the resets. I feel like the classic arena reset is kind of meant to be streamed so and yeah sorry for all of the people that don't care about um AFK journey. I totally get that the Graphics is kind of annoying to some people, so it is what it is, but might as well play it on the side while I'm in the lobby. Um, I don't know which one. If I had to guess, it's a hybrid Wukong because those are pretty popular. I guess we're gonna go with uh, UDK and Rotos. I, I do have the 5 star polymorph on UDK, it's not quite 6 star yet but it might become useful though he doesn't have I think he has like maybe 270 accuracy or whatever okay let's do let's do a 10 bull on AFK journey this is total like um, text vomit or this is gonna go um Past people who don't play it game. Okay, th that's okay. Basically, in this game, they have a mechanic that when you pull champions, you're guaranteed to get champions that you like. You have a wish list, and you only get champions from the li wish list. So, if you get like epic, chances are it's gonna be an epic that you want because it's literally only gonna be on the list that you chose. Of course, some of them you're gonna prefer much more than others. So. But it's still, you're, you're gonna feel like the progression is easier. Uh, yeah, should I go for the... Yeah, I want to go for the Arman span, there's no way I can go for anything else, so... I'll go with the Ankara. I wanted to get this champion. Uh, can I show it here? Kruger, uh, not Kruger, Corin. 
um, he's gonna be good in like grand boss where I'm doing pretty good by the way but well okay not clan boss I guess it's the daily boss battle it's basically clan boss but it's not a clan thing it's just a daily boss battle it's gonna be good in the clan boss too but this one is more important anyway I'll I'll play that after this video I guess but Actually, instead, instead of shilling for AFK journey, okay, let's do it after this battle. Might as well check what we got on offer on Reddit today. Okay, the first trade is kind of interesting. They are complaining about the gear removal. That's another mechanic that I have mentioned that. Uh, other games do it better like for instance for instance in water of realms there is no cost to swapping gear and not only does it have no cost but there's like a new UI that you can quick swap the item sets from two champions to each other and it makes it super easy but barrio i guess um, i mean we have literally discussed this with the cms and they have replied to us about it and they feel like it could cause game balance issues or whatever, but I wish they would just cave on it and let us swap gear freely. I feel like they almost might do it because the... What are they even called? The super raids, they used to be a big thing that people complained about for years, that why can't we just do instant auto battles on dungeons, which is a mechanic that other similar games have had and or why couldn't they speed them up and so on and it took many years but eventually they made it a little bit um, user friendly okay yeah we totally got destroyed by the turn meter boost from Sifi the Mika passive and George it damage but I don't think there was like <laughs> what what else would I have picked against that Misclicking. Gear removal cost gone for good. Who else feels gear removal cost should be removed? We already have to pay for upgrades. Why do we have to pay for to switch gear? The only time I make progress is when gear removal is on for 24 hours. Instead of adding new features, just remove one. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Barium is very stubborn on some issues because some other stuff, like I mentioned it in the past, but there used to be um, a player made, I don't know what you call it, add on, not, not add on, but there was like an interface made by players, kind of like Arasal Helper that you could check the pity counter with that, always, like, even if you didn't keep a track of it, you could always check it with that. But Plarium just made it uh, not work, and they didn't implement, in the implement it in the game. There isn't really a good reason why they couldn't have it in the game, to be honest. Well, ap apart from, I guess, that they feel like it would sell less shards if they did it, but I don't really even know if that's true. By the way, if we take a look at AFK Journey, for instance, if we talk about both the um, gear swapping and the... Um, okay, wait. Okay, I guess he's gonna... I think it's the same guy. I guess he's gonna go with the Wukong as well. Uh, I don't know what he... If he goes with Wukong, the, other, the Heligat is definitely gonna suck. Should I go with Eva and Necro? With, with UDK and Eva, Eva can't even one shot Rodos, so I don't know how good Eva is gonna be. 
let's just go with these and hope we get lucky with the uh, what he picks but so in afk journey you, you literally see the pt counter like you can see here only five more to go i'm gonna get the pt in five summons so like okay uh do i want to do it i might as well do it on video so we can see it here here's the number five i got seven summons so if i don't get it before that i'm gonna get it on the fifth one like plarium could totally do it it's not like they just don't want to do it because they think it's bad for the bottom line but other games they they have been able to pull this off uh what do i pick yeah i'm totally gonna lose it but yeah okay so two more two away from the pity pool but we literally can see the counter right there it's so much feels so much um like um it's just better i don't know why they can't do it and one pull left now we're gonna get one of these that you not, not only uh do we have the pt counter but like i said we have the wish list so the champion that i'm gonna get is one of these that i personally picked that i want to get and okay but which one <laughs> i don't want them all equally as much okay okay this one is good this one is for like uh end game pvp and I, I need to get him up. Okay, good. Anyway, I guess this turned out to be complaining about Plarium uh, video, but I mean... Raid is still good, I just... they could easily make it better, though. I mean, there's always something to complain about. OP champions, the meta, Plarium being greedy and making the game user-friendly. But that's not to say that like they could they could make all of things these things better or at least some of them. I mean, they could address some of the issues that players always complain about. I mean, I understand that uh, like sometimes they know what makes them more money and just because everybody or just because the majority of people think one way doesn't even mean that they are right but still they should they should cave in on some issues i feel like like when they did the super raids it was so tiny thing and many other games do it like much like you you literally can do instant battles in dungeons but the community reaction to it was still very good, so... The, the raid player base is like like a wife that has been abused. That uh, If you are just a little bit nice to them, <laughs> they are gonna react to it insanely positive because they have been conditioned by all of the bad behavior by Plarium. Maybe that's a bit, that's a bit harsh way of putting it, but... That, that's pretty much how it is. Yeah, th Tormin A1 does like no damage. Granted, I don't have defense buff and I don't um, have 3 star or 4 star blessing. But still, it does like 1 fourth of Rotos health. Yeah, we. we and because of the UDK, we can't do double hit with the A2. The A2 would kind of hit more, but uh, it's too late. Can we kill the Mikage? No. Not even that. Okay, might as well surrender it. It was the same guy, right? Yeah, it was the same guy twice. Yeah, it, it happens. It's kind of hard to deal with that. 
well, it's not hard, but I I don't have an answer to it. Wait, what? It's the game. Press? Why can't? Okay. I guess it was bugging out a little bit. I mean, I guess I could make a video about like what I want to see for Plarium to make things better, but I feel like surely tons of CCs have done, done videos saying the same exact things and they hear it like 300 million times a day in Facebook and Discord and whatever, so I, I don't know if it's even worth making video about it and reaching to the choir. So, actually, eh, maybe I ask some other people about it. Maybe that could be, could be one of those videos that maybe could do it with somebody else. I've complained about it in the past, more like wine. That um, I'm kind of, I'd want to do collapse, but I'm not the type of guy that uh, I don't do the kind of videos that. <laughs> that are good to make collabs with other people, and I never really propose it to other people. Even though I want even though I want to do them, so maybe that would be the kind of topic that you could... I could make one with maybe some other content creator, and we could maybe both say our main, main things, and then we can discuss about it. I'm sure many, many people have made a video like that, so... Kind of getting a lot of this softball is fights with players that are at 4.8k but I still keep losing to them so but if that's a nuke Wukong with Zeke front he basically has to ban my UDK so maybe unlike the last guy I can actually win this one With both Armands and UDK, and if he has two nukers with the single target nuke, that, that puts him in very rough. Yeah, okay. He basically has to ban UDK. He, he can't go for Armands ban, and that's gonna suck for him. I guess I'll go for Mikake ban. I often want to ban her, but there's like 15 other... What? 15 other things that I want to ban more than Mikage. Okay, so Mikage had an ally attack and I banned it and yeah, he does have a little bit of AoE with Wukong and Siegfried, but basically he's not gonna be a threat right now with the UDK. Surely there's no way that I can lose this fight, right? Yeah, also I can't... How, how can I not even remember that champion's name? Okay, now I'm just being silly, like... Everybody knows what the champion is, but I can't just recall the name out of the top of my head, but it's been a while since I, since I saw anybody use it. I'm sure I have seen it before in Live Arena, and... Cardinal? No, not Cardinal. How can I not remember the name? She has been even meta in Classic Arena at times, so... Even right now some people are using her. Is it Cardinal? I feel like Cardinal is the other one with the 10 meter reduction and... Defense uh, debuff. Oh no, it's Cardinal. What's the other one called then? I feel like it's some similar name. But yeah, did, we knew it from the lobby that this fight was basically unwinnable for him.
well, I mean, I I guess he's prolonging it, prolonging it pretty well. So the stone skin is almost over. <laughs> Not really. He is at like zero turn meter. So. And he's definitely out of revives and passes at this point. But yeah, in, in case somebody doesn't know, like there has been many times these cardinal strats where you where you go with uh, like slow team and you have like um, you basically let your team die and you have stone skin or immunity cardinal or something like that. Oh come on, see okay, I guess I should have just done nothing and hit Siegfried on the block damage and. So that this didn't happen. Okay, I'll know next time to do it. This happened to me before and... I guess sometimes on Siegfried you just can't kill his team and you just need to... Hit him on his block damage and do nothing, but... Cardinal actually has been... Quite popular in... Not popular, but... She has um, had her times in Classic Arena when... Even the top accounts ran offense with her never defense but offense specifically because then you can you know what the team they are gonna use and you can do the right matchup but even in the current meta right now it's actually kind of um, usable and some people do use it I think I might even have a preset with her but I don't really use her I prefer that Arman's offense, but some people do actually um, do use her. Like for instance, against um, double Taras teams, she would be good, but double Taras kind of fell off the meta anyway with with the release of Narsus, so it's not really a thing. Okay, I'm really we're really curious. What's the other champion's name? Then? Oh, it's Deacon. Now I can remember it before I check it. Yeah, it's... Where is it? Yeah, Deacon Armstrong. That's what I was... conflating the name with. I thought he was... <laughs> he was Cardinal, but I guess not. Yeah, the only thing... Cardinal A1 and A2 basically don't do anything. The only thing you care about is the... A3. Revives all dead allies. Heals them by blah 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 and boost their turn meter to max, that's the only thing you care about. It revives everybody with uh, max turn meter, not 100% turn meter, with max turn meter, meaning that they should get a turn after her, or they will, so you're not gonna get in, you're not gonna get caught in like you might get caught into um, basically any other turn meter that revives that. 100% Okay, time for maybe maybe a couple more Did we have anything else on the reddit? I just Look at one thread and then I forgot about it. Okay, another new Wukong. They are pretty popular today, even though I haven't been using him as much lately because um, I guess because I have Narses and if they don't have UDK or Harima, then I'm usually gonna go with Trotos anyway. Okay, I guess that's basically it for Reddit today. Saldus and R base.
I kind of, I'm kind of tempted to go with Mikage, or I'm not, but it would be good, but his Warlord is definitely gonna be faster than Mikage, so there's no way I can do it. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with Angkor again. It's kind of boring to rely on the same stuff, but uh, I don't really think anything else would have made sense here. I want to go for the Armand's ban, not Warlord. If I went for the Warlord ban, maybe I could have gone with Mitral and tried to petrify him, but I do actually fear the Armand's more than Warlord, or at least in this um, control setting where I picked, where I have both Rotos and Angora in my team, so I kind of have a way to maybe, maybe deal with the lockout. But yeah, the Summer Wives video turned out to be me crying about Barium like always, so... Okay, I, I like it. He, he has 6p stone skin on both of... Uh, not, yeah, 6p. He has 6p stone skin on both of his snookers, so... I do see some people doing that. Usually it's with those Arima teams that often have triple nuker. Um, but he, I guess he still had plenty of damage by... Narsus, I mean, my, my Angora still almost died to the status. Even though I guess it's in 6p stone skin. I almost would have thought that my Angora would have been more tanky than that. Ah, the goddamn taunt. Yeah, I, I guess the 6p stone skin lasted long enough that um, it did the job. I can't do anything because of the taunt and the stone skin on our base, and I guess that's it. Rodos isn't gonna get another turn, and even okay, maybe I can get a turn with Ankara. Yeah, it's not gonna be enough. It's definitely over at this point, right? Yeah. So he, he had enough damage even with the 6 piece. Now, of course I was locked out and so on, but yeah. That wasn't even with... Never mind Merciless, but not even with Lethal or Savage. Not on either one of his snookers. Basically it was Taldos. I mean Wukong didn't even get to do damage through the UDK, so... I just died to stone skin Taldos. <laughs> But yeah, it's first pick Armands or Enemidas. I'm looking at Reddit on my side screen and there's literally a trade card, how to counter Armands. There really isn't like... There's many champions that there is no counter to. There really isn't counter to Armands. I mean, going first, but that isn't really a counter. I wouldn't say. Okay, he got the lockout again. I think it's the same guy. Am I just gonna go with... with these two? He does have the R base. And that's how we lost last time. So maybe not. Maybe we're gonna go with Dutchess this time. And let him block revive with the... No, okay, I, I guess we're gonna go with this. Let him have the... Angora.
I do like the fact that you get to battle the same people multiple times in a row, but I don't know if I should be happy about that because that definitely says something about the popularity of Live Arena right now. I really hope we get some updates or events in regards to it, that they don't just let the game more slowly dwindle down. I think this is the best, like, raid was meant for live arena, if, it, if people just had the champions to compete and the, it was a little bit more balanced, but I think this is the best thing that raid has to offer, to be honest. It's just so unapproachable and there's many, um, it takes a lot of time and it's hard to get into and so on. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing really I can do here. We're not gonna have enough damage with Tormen, but who else I'm gonna pick? Helicat isn't gonna work. Not against Arbes. Uh, petrification. Not against Wukong. Block buff, debuff. Maybe I could have gone with Eva. Maybe I actually should have picked Eva instead of. Um, Dormin, but he does have, with whoever I ban, he does have immunity, and it's gonna take way too long for me to kill him. Should I go for the, yeah, let's go for the Narcissus ban. Okay, he, okay, he went for the UDK. Maybe if he didn't go for UDK, maybe, maybe we could have done it, but we're gonna get locked out again, and, uh, he has the R base. Like, even if I did ban the lockout, I still couldn't do anything through the R base, so. Yeah, it does suck. <laughs> Luck to not have a lockout. But I'm not um, holding my hopes up that lockout is ever gonna get nerfed. I feel like if they were gonna nerf it, it would have been done by now. And they ever nerfed Polymorph, so and lockout has never been touched. Warlord was even buffed at one point. This is one hilarious thing that some people might not even know about, but literally, Warlord Lockout was buffed, and you might say that, okay, but I guess Warlord wasn't meta back then. No, Warlord was literally the best champion in the game at that point. There was no Yumeko or any other things. There was nothing else comparable to Warlord. It was the undisputed best champion in the game, and he got buffed. <laughs> it was so dumb. That's like the most most dumbest thing Raid has ever done and they have done many many silly things but like uh, whoever decided to buff Warlord when he was the best champion in the game that that guy should be in like some like I don't know like congressional hearing where the senators grill him about the about his actions and who paid who paid him money to do this and what's the real reason because this can't be like uh <laughs> just it makes no sense there's no reason to buff warlord especially at that time like at this point warlord is much much worse than he used to be at that time and he's of course still good but there was nothing else comparable to him at that time and the, the meta was just completely revolving around him. That, that was during the meta, where nobody was using any nukers in classic arena defense. You always used Warlord with either Tormin or Hegemon, and literally you didn't, you went for full style defense, nobody used any nukers, so. And if you, if you didn't have a Warlord, you definitely couldn't, um, couldn't compete, let's say. Wait, surely Tormin is gonna get a turn before Sifi, right? Okay, good. 
But do I have enough damage to do one tenth of CP HP? Okay, barely. Good. Did we actually win this fight? What? I guess we did. I mean, well, w Wukong is still there, so let's let's not get too excited just yet. W Wukong has Wukong has taken um, many fights like this. Yeah, we're locked out. Wukong gets a turn. Maybe he stuns the Rotos. We could still lose if that happens. Okay, he got polymorphed. And Warlord is gonna move before Rotos, so no. Are we good? I feel like we're still good. Maybe if he stuns Rotos, he still has a... Uh, okay, weak it. Okay, okay. It's okay, we, we won it. No, no need to panic anymore. Nice. Okay, I'm taking very, very, very tiny steps today, but I guess we're climbing a little bit. Maybe. Maybe if I lose this fight, I'm basically back where I started from. Maybe not. I think maybe I was like 50-something uh, points, so I guess we did improve a little bit. I went kind of uh, a bit more risky today and I did many fights where I didn't ban the lockout. Often I kind of feel like I should have just let them have the lockout and rolled my dice with that. And I think like last battle I actually probably should have banned the lockout, but it worked out in the end. And it's again the same guy, and we both know what the other one is gonna do. He doesn't have Harima, so I, I guess that's good. I guess I'm taking the Wukong this time, I don't know. Why I didn't use it in the other ones, but we are gonna go with that. Wait, oh, I didn't pick it because he picked it, but I don't think he's gonna pick it now when I went for the early UDK. Right? I mean, he's definitely gonna go with our base, so yeah, that, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we're gonna ban the lockout, but the question is that, um, well, I, I, yeah, I guess we're just gonna go with Jatus, yeah. It's a no-brainer, actually. Staldos can weak it on the Jatus, and he might be kind of tempted to actually ban it, because I don't think it's gonna play, like, in the first fight that where the Staldos killed my Narsus easily, I mean, my Angora. I don't think he's gonna kill her. Just easily, even if he was in lethal, but surely there's no way a six piece stone skin Staltos can kill my Dutchess. Well, but he does have the. I guess in that fight I banned the. Uh, banned the Narsus, but. Did I say Dutchess or Narsus? I banned the Narsus in the other fight, but. His Narsus can easily, I guess, kill my Dutchess, so... Ah. I don't know, maybe I should have actually gone for the Narsus ban. Just when I said that uh, I did well today not to ban the Warlord, but I think I should have banned the Narsus in this one. Yeah. It made sense up till the point where I picked Dutchess and got the bolster in my team. I should have banned the... Narsus now. Maybe I can survive it if he doesn't rock Helm Smasher and don't have strong gear, but there's a good chance that the 
Narthus is gonna one-shot my Duchess, since her passive isn't applied and it's gonna be a double hit and so on. Okay, I barely survived it. Protoss died even through stone skin, or I guess it was buff stripped, I wasn't I didn't notice it. Wait, he doesn't have Who do I hit? I guess I'll hit the Mika again. He doesn't have the Stone skin and taunt up. If I broke the Helm Smasher now, I should kill everybody but the Stalos. No? Okay, that that definitely was without Helm Smasher broke. Didn't hit that hard. Uh, can we get saved by the fear? Yeah, oh nice, we actually got it. Yeah, fear actually was clutch at that point. Can my Dutch survive? Okay, weak hit. Okay, now we definitely won. No no way we can lose at this point. He doesn't even have the Wukong. There's no way. He used both of the AoEs on the Staldos. The Narthus can't destroy my Dutchess anymore, so there's, there's no way I can lose. Even if I had only Dutchess alive and no Wukong, he wouldn't be able to kill me in 30 minutes, but we have the Wukong and UDK, so it's done. You definitely can't hear it on the video because of the microphone, but there's like full, um, like, uh, uh, what, what do you even call that? Like, I, I can hear the birds, birds chirping very loud. It sounds like from some documentary or something, but the microphone definitely isn't gonna pick that up. I feel like the bird has to be like right next to my window, or like two birds. Well, we actually... We had a positive track record today. We didn't get so many fights in, I think... Many of them were pretty slow ones. Actually, we did I just get one more win? I, I I was celebrating so much, but I think I actually... Yeah, I got a couple wins yesterday of video. That's why... Um, that's why I'm at this high point. So I barely... I barely even gain points. I maybe won one or two more fights than I lost. Never mind. I'll take it, I guess. Anyway, I missed the... Missed the fusion for the Air Street, and am I gonna miss the Mikake event as well? I'm still kind of um, not sure if I want to go for it. I do have two star Mikake Soul. It's gonna be so massive pain to go for this one. I think I can do it, but it's it wouldn't be easy. I will see how hard the events are, but I guess we do have like a. Uh, Yeah, okay, there it was. We have Primal and couple Chaosaurs, so maybe maybe it's gonna be worth going for. I'm still... Like, Chaosaur is the top resource in the game, outside of, like, champions, and I guess it's related to gear. But um, you can definitely make a lot of progress with Chaosaur. You don't want to underestimate this, even though it's super annoying to go very far in the events just to get one Chaosaur on get nothing with that, but they are very potent, you can definitely get some big upgrades with them. Many of my main items are with Chaos or so... Almost... Almost interesting to do just for that. Also, I feel like we're getting more mythical Chaos or at this point than Legendary one, because you get the mythical from where do I have it? Yeah, you, you get the mythical from uh, Cursed City, and you get the legendary one generally from events or the clan shop, but the, 
The clan shop is super random. When you get it, it's five at once, which is a huge deal. But I think we get um, multiple of that. Is it? We get two critical ores from one one room, but I actually think you, you get more than two six star mythicals per rotation. I can't remember it out of the top of my head. It might actually be like three to five mythical chaos or yeah I don't think I can see it anymore. It feels like kind of plentiful but I don't really want to waste them willy nilly so I have been usually saving them up for actual mythical pieces and not Legendary, legendary ones, but the mythicals are pretty rare, and I don't think I actually use them for mythicals in the end. So, I mean, we do get the mythical accessories too at this point. So, you, I guess, you want to save at least few because there might be one where you want to use it on. But I don't know if I had any any actual good mythical piece to re-roll yet. I mean, outside of like re-rolling this kind of random stuff, but I mean like getting a triple or quad or something like that. Having a mythical amulet on the right faction and so on. Also, I'm super close to having really good sets on Slayer on both attack and defense, but that's kind of funny because that means that if I want to make a good set, I still have to buy more of them. I guess I will, but yeah. That, that's a side note. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Have a super nice day and see ya.